usually the CrossFit gym just says, you know, give some information about paleo or zone or whatever it may be. Now they will be able to give their athletes a system, right? A, a proven system and process for reaching their body composition goals, um, which again, is gonna create a, an enormous amount of value for them. Mm -hmm. They're gonna make more money because the members are gonna stick around longer, but they also have this great new revenue stream. So it's gonna be amazing for all of the CrossFitters out there as well as the gym owners. Welcome to Barbell Business. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Marcus Gersey. And uh, we have traveled to a secret location, secret bunker here in the Midwest, and uh, to meet with Michael Cashew of uh, Brute Strength. And today we're gonna talk, I'm excited, we're gonna talk about your entrepreneurial journey. Uh, I met you as you were getting into it. The beginning. The very mm -hmm. beginning. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm interested really just to catch up and also fill in uh, the entire audience uh, about what you've gone through over the last few years. Yeah, uh, we also met your wife when she was, before she was your wife, when she was first getting into her entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey, and she runs Working Against Gravity, which is also a company that's doing really well right now, and you guys are both growing very fast, so I'm really curious how, how you guys, leading both of those companies, uh, separately, but also kind of together at the same time, how you help each other, and, bo and both uh, how you stay out of each other's lanes at the same time, like how much you decide to help intentionally, and how much you go, you know what, that's your thing, um, you can do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I want to dig into what's happening with Brute, what you've got on your plate, what exciting projects you have going on, and uh, really see where this whole thing's going. Oh yeah, looking forward oh, to it. Yeah. And I, I, I'm honored to be on the show. Uh, I have so much gratitude for you guys from you know helping me start my journey to helping me meet my wife and a million other things. So I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Yeah. So can you like what got you started? Well, <laughs> or where did you come from? Let's get digging in. That. I come from a small town in Louisiana, yeah. um, population 5,000, New Roads, Louisiana. And mm. I grew up thinking, you know, my dad was an attorney, did a lot of like personal injury stuff. He worked for, he was a congressman for a while. So, you know, completely n not, not in business at all. My mom was a special ed teacher. Again, not in business. None of my family members were, were entrepreneurs at all. And I grew up thinking literally businessmen were crooks, right? That whole uh, notion of like sleazy salesmen. I thought mm. all businessmen, businesswomen were that. And so I was uh, in 2013, I was working for LSU as a strength and conditioning coach. And that's kind of the epitome or close to that. Uh, it, at least it was for me, the epitome of strength and conditioning. Grew up loving that team, loving that university, and you know, I, I was a strength and conditioning coach for them, and at the end of the day, it just wasn't fulfilling. And so it was very stimulating, very exciting. I was working with some of the best athletes on the planet, but it wasn't, I didn't feel like I was making the impact on people that I wanted to. And so I had an opportunity to go and move back to Salt Lake City and buy one of Tommy Hackenbrook's gems at uh, Ute CrossFit. And so the deal was he was going to allow me six months to come in, see if I thought it was a good deal, and then buy this location from him. And at that same time, so again, this is 2013, at the same time, I took you know, a very, very small operation of programming one-on-one -on -one for people and turned it into this new company that is Brute. Mm. So when you went to Salt Lake and you were gonna work with, with Tommy, did you come in there like and try to like manage the gym like just to see how it would feel or were you just there observing? Like how, how did that work? Yeah, so me and Jacob Hutton went in together and we completely took the place over. Mm. We managed it, we scheduled all of the classes, we coached most of the classes, um, we, we started new initiatives like new challenges and, and you know nutrition um, consulting type things. We, we really took over everything but the like back end finances and legal stuff. Mm -hmm. So why, obviously you ended up not buying it. Mm -hmm. what, was, what was the story with that? Why, is that, why not? 
it was a few things. First off, you know, once we really dug into the numbers, it wasn't a good business deal for us. We just didn't think that it was worth the money that Tommy was asking. And, you know, for him, like, you know, he, he it, it's worth a lot, but for us, we didn't think it was, it was worth that for us. And the other, the other huge piece is that over the next six months, I went, when I started Brute, I thought, you know, this is really gimmicky. No one's going to like online programming. I thought it was kind of lame. Mm. And, you know, I saw through really social media the ability to impact such a greater number of people, whether it be them commenting on the posts we were making or, or emails we were getting in. And I just saw this huge opportunity to have a much bigger impact. Mm. And I also, from, you know, experiencing being an entrepreneur, realized that, I didn't have to be a sleazy salesman. I could I could operate however I want. I you know I, I met with you guys at the very first uh, mastermind, and you got you you were talking about things like adding value to people's lives and teaching them to be more vulnerable and like all of these things that really really resonated with me on a deep level and that just really appealed to me. So you know that mixed with the opportunity to affect a lot more people and the added freedom of being. 100% online, right, and, and getting to work remotely. Um, it was like, I want to do one of these really, really well, uh, rather than both of them half-assed. And so mm -hmm. that's why I chose to, that was the biggest reason I chose to not buy the gym and go with Brute. Mm -hmm. I remember we sat down when you were, when you were thinking about this. Yeah, the OC and, throwdown. And yeah, the OC throwdown. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, a big part of our conversation was the opportunity cost. Exactly. It wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't worth what Tommy was asking. Right. It just wasn't worth it to you. That, yeah, that's so, what I was trying and, to say. Exactly. Yeah, and it's like, um, I think a lot of times people <coughs> think about uh, the value as just being this static thing of like, mm -hmm. oh, we just got a valuation. It's like, it really is only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I just remember having that conversation about opportunity cost and it looked like you had like something that was going to make that bigger impact. Right. Yeah, it was the best decision for sure. Yeah. How do you think you came to the conclusion at an early age that, that being a businessman meant you were a crook? <clears throat> One, that I didn't have anyone, any like mentors to look up to, no family members that were, that were doing it. And then probably just watching, watching television and, and hearing, you know, the, the traditional rumors of, of literally like sleazy salesmen, mm. you know, um, not, not, any, not any real reason other than that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually had a uh, period of time where, so I, I love supplements. Mm -hmm. We just, I was showing you some a minute ago, but I've been taking supplements since I was like 15 years old. I never thought they were bad. Mm -hmm. As a product, I've always thought they were, it was always, I've always been a part of my life. But there was a period of time where I didn't want to run a supplement company. I was like, oh, I would never, you know, people are like, why don't you do supplements? I'm like, eh, because... My impression of people who run supplement companies is that they can be sleazy. Right. And the marketing is just real cheesy and all these things. And I had an experience that really made some shifts in my, my thinking about things. I remember talking to my, uh, to my business coach at the time. I was like, you know what? I really, I, I, I really changed how I think about uh, supplements. That's something I'd like to get into, but I don't like how other companies do it. And he said, you know what, just make a list of all the things you don't like that supplement companies do and make a commitment not to do those things. Right. And then like, I was like, <laughs> Sounds so, huh, simple. so fucking <laughs> simple. It's the same thing in business, you know, people were like, oh, I don't want to do sales because sales feels icky. It's like, well, just figure out the part of this, the sales process or the part of running a business that you don't like and just make a commitment not to do those mm -hmm. things. And, uh, you know, you can... I, what I love about business, and, and I used to not want to be a businessman, and uh, once I realized that in business you can make up your own rules, I was like, I was like oh, got it. huge got opportunity it. Mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. to, to design the life and, and the business that I would want. And so, yeah, it's, I think that once people had that realization, it's like, oh, I can, that is the one place you can create your own rules. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. For me, it was like there was just a lack of, it was complete ignorance, right? I did, I'd, I'd never heard of this idea of entrepreneurs being the modern day heroes, right? But you look at people like Elon Musk literally changing the world mm -hmm. and that's that's inspiring. But I, I never had um, anyone tell me that sort of thing. I just saw on TV the the car salesman and then my dad saying, yeah, those fucking assholes. You know, like right. some, mm -hmm. little, little things like that. 
Yep. It doesn't take much when you're right. a kid for mm -hmm. little things to be peppered in, and now it's it's a, it's the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you still have some of that, like, even if it's like 0.01% of you that's like, that lingers in the background to like, just never go that direction? For me to never go that direction, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, wanna, I wanna lead with, and this is another thing that you guys have really helped me uh, learn, is I wanna lead with adding value for people, and they, you know, it, it, it's trading uh, currency for the value that I give them, rather than just like trying to squeeze every dollar out of them I can. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I never wanna end up like that, like that you know, original notion of, of a salesman or a business businessman that I had. Yeah. Well, was there any one event that like that kicked you over the edge where you realized that, that you didn't have to be like that and you could just do whatever you wanted? The mastermind. The mm. the bar oh, yeah. the first barbell shrug mastermind. I literally I don't think you guys understand. When I went to that, I had no idea what I was about to get myself into. Mm. And by the end of the mastermind I felt like I had a, I, I, I had some strategy, and I felt this new confidence, right? Mm. That I, I, full I could. Full confidence. Oh, full of confidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the second one. That was the right. second one. Yeah. Yeah. Jumped the gun. I forgot about that. You yeah. said confidence. I'm like, oh, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. The first mastermind was in Orange County. We were at yeah. Brian McKenzie's gym. Brian McKenzie's gym. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Brian exactly. McKenzie's gym. That's right. And uh, yeah, that was, that was like the first. Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah, that was like, I think that was the first one. Like the first one. Yeah. You're, talk, you're talking about the mastermind we went to the to the ranch with that big mansion. No, that no, that, that was, was the, the second one. one. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking about the first one. Oh, the very first one. Okay. I had no idea. Left with confidence, and also, but again, you guys were talking about having a positive impact in people's lives, and I never heard of it put that way. Right? I thought I was just getting into just coaching people. Right, and that was exciting, but y'all, you opened my eyes to something so much greater, and that's why I started out with, you know, how grateful I am towards you guys mm -hmm. because you um, completely shifted my mindset at, during that weekend. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So after the mastermind, what what did you do? Like you walked away with a new perspective, and then what were like the action steps you took after that? Um, let's see, a few things. One, I, I one of the best things you guys taught me was that stay in your unique genius, right? Mm. At the time, I thought I was gonna have to do everything and it was really daunting. Um, and I, you know, I know that a lot of people, their businesses fail because they try to do things that are not, they're not great at or they just try to do everything and they end up doing them all half-assed. Uh, I knew really early on that I'm, I'm much better at ideas and starting projects and I have no follow through. And so very quickly, you know, I found people, Matt Bruce is my business partner yeah. now, he handles all finance and legal. I, I have no interest in that. And it, it, you know, even having those conversations takes so much of my energy that yeah. I have nothing left for everything else. Right. That one was huge, a director of operations very early on to make sure that all of the ideas that we had actually came to fruition, right? So mm -hmm. we, we started building a team really quickly. Um, we got on social media, another thing uh, at the mastermind, I'm sure it sounds like I'm just fucking stroking y'all's dicks, but yeah, it, was, it, it, was, it was a big keep, weekend for Keep me. going. It was a big weekend going. for me. Um, I, I, throughout the past few years, I had periodically gotten off of social media entirely because I felt like it disconnected me from people and uh, it made me, com I would tend to compare myself to others a lot more. And you, you basically, that, and that's I said- a common struggle, I think, for everybody. That, totally. that happens in athletics and that happens as a business owner. Um, I've been, <laughs> I've been sitting in one mastermind and then pulling up like pictures of someone else at another mastermind. I was like, fuck, yeah. I wish I was at that one. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what is wrong with me? Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I'm, I'm like at this amazing event and I'm already like getting like jealous about something happening exactly. somewhere else. And I'm like, the fuck is going on? Exactly. So that, we you know, humans. Uh, yeah. We're yeah. Strange. Yeah. <laughs> so I was really against it. And I was like, you know, I, I love all your ideas. I'm not getting on social media. And you basically told me, okay, you can do that, but you're missing like a free opportunity to do marketing. It's just silly. And, uh, you know, there was, you cursed at me and said it was, <laughs> it was ridiculous and it had a big impression on me. And I, I so a week later. That's how um, we get to people. Yeah. We just swear at them. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's the, what the mastermind is actually all about. Just sit you down in a room and just, just yell at you for a get couple days. Get drunk at night and curse at them. That's, <laughs> exactly. that's the trick, guys. Exactly. <laughs> uh, a week later, I started the Brute Strength Instagram page and from that day on, that's been our biggest social platform. And that's, again, going back to like what kind of hooked me on this, uh, 
on this online platform was the ability to reach so many more people. And it was through that first social media platform that really gave me that uh, kind of idea or concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like all the stuff you guys do with your social media. I think that's something everyone should be checking out mm -hmm. because I, the branding component and mm -hmm. you, how you guys have been able to stick with that. And when I see a post from, from your company, I know it doesn't even have to have the logo on it. Mm -hmm. go, oh, that looks like a brute picture. Right. And so I think that's something that, right, give those guys a follow and check it out for sure. Mm -hmm. What would you say, you know, you said you're, you, you're kind of the idea guy and, and plowing ahead and you're not big on follow through, but more specifically, what is your unique genius uh, now that you've had years to, you know, and, and I've noticed for, for all of us, you know, as the years go on, it gets finer and finer and finer. What does that look like for you and your uh, and your business? Yeah, right right now, I, I, I totally agree. Like it does get clearer and clearer. Right now for me, it's one-on-one -on -one interaction with my team, right? I, I know that a very short <coughs> conversation with one of them goes a very long way, right? A little bit of direction on whatever project they're working on goes a really, really long way. And on top of that is just overall direction. Um, I one of the biggest mistakes I made early on is I thought everyone was like me and they just need to like hear the, the first words of like what they need to do and they're fucking running, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of people on my team, they need to be sat down and told the steps. They need to be told, um, you know, what's going what's gonna to happen next, um, exactly what I want out of them. Mm -hmm. And so investing in those conversations has gone a really, really long way. Yeah, if you're if you're the ideas and visionary, then mm -hmm. getting I, I think you said earlier you're not detail oriented, maybe not at all. Yeah, so it's like learning to get specific right. when you're giving direction. That that's something that that I found to be challenging and getting better at that all the time too. And also mm -hmm. finding someone that it doesn't take them a lot of energy to look for those finer details, right? That's just right. what they do naturally. They mm. love to do it. So I give them what I'm looking for and then they go and do it 10 times better than I would have done myself. Are you energizing any specific role in the company like directing sales or directing the, the, the programs or anything like that? What Are you doing anything day to day, like actually a specific role, like a job within your own company? Day to day, no, none. And that's, um, I think that's, that goes really well with my personality of like kind of jack of all trades, master of none. And I also, it takes me a lot of energy to do things repetitively. The only thing I've been able to, to do consistently is the podcast. Um, everything else, I, I have, you know, really strong intentions of following through and it just falls off. And so, no, I'm not, I'm not involved in a lot of the day-to-day -day operations. Good. That probably suits you. Yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> That's where we want to be, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah it's, good. it's easy to be creative there. I think a lot of times people look at companies and they go, oh, man, they're just doing so many crazy, amazing things or whatever. And, and the truth is somebody who has, who founded it or is, you know, in, on the executive team doesn't have a lot of day to day and they're able to have those ideas and give you that time to start projects and watch them most of them probably fail. Right. Like, have you, do you have that experience of starting a project and just going, oh, we have to kill this now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And not, and usually not so gracefully, right? It just kind of peters out <laughs> and everybody's a little disappointed and yeah. we just kind of like sweep another rug. And that's, you <laughs> we'll know, we'll talk about that one. Yeah. 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 We've definitely had those experiences too where it's like, oh, it didn't really work out. So, yeah. Shutting it down can be painful, but also, create a lot of freedom. Right, new, op new opportunities. Yeah, yeah I, I try to make sure that I have a couple times throughout my week where I'm not just trying to respond to emails and get on phone calls. And so that's come down to really my, my scheduling and planning um, to make sure I have time to actually be creative and not just respond and react to things. Yeah, yeah. Let's take a break real quick. I wanna dig into uh, the relationship piece cool. when we come back, yeah. My name is Jake Sorokman. I'm the owner of Athletics United, home of Cross and Seek and Destroy. Before working with my business coach, um, there was real no direction. There was no real authority as to what needed to get done and what was going to help us strive to get to the next level. And I think with him, it really focused and pinpointed where we needed to go as a business and what was going to help us excel to get to the next level. Since working with our business coach, things have really got put into place. Um, I have a lot more direction as to let my staff know what needs to be done to reach those weekly and monthly goals. And with our business coach, he makes sure it's getting done. 
We start to see a lot of changes very quickly uh, within the first few weeks of working with everyone. It really helped us organize things so that we were able to do the things we love, which is learning the lots. We've seen a, a huge success in our monthly membership rates. As were before working with them, we were at about that 10 to 12 members a month. Now within the first four or five months, we're reaching that 20 to 25 members in a month. So just in over four months, we've done over 100 members, which has been huge in, in this time. It's really allowed me as a business owner to not so much step away from the business, but to put more into the business. Um, the things on the back end now being more organized and um, you know just have a purpose of wanting to get done. It's freed up some time with my family to be able to spend extra time on weekends with my daughter and do the things that I generally want to enjoy doing. I would have to say the favorite part about this program has just been the mentoring, the, the, the extra help, the extra hand, the extra guidance. Um, for someone like myself who thought they had reached the top and was able to do whatever they needed to do, these guys just 360 and just taught me a whole new aspect on the business and, and really striving to make it better. I would say anyone out there that's looking to work with Barbell Business, is it, it's, it's a no-brainer. It's something that should be done with every business owner to make their business strive to become what you want it to be. Um, they're going to not only help you along the way, but they're going to show you the tools, uh, what it takes to, to be the best you can be. And we're back and uh, at the secret location in the Midwest with the brute bear in the corner. What, uh, what's the story of the brute bear, Mike? Well, as I was telling you before, a lot of people call it superstition, but uh, every time we go to a, a big competition, the bear gets a first class seat on whatever airline we're taking, and it's just a part of the fabric of our organization. Makes sense. <laughs> mm. Looks like he may, he may be a little, uh, going a little too heavy on the supplements, though. He's looking a little bloated these days. Oh, yeah. he's chilling. He's, uh, he's actually recovering. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Is he mostly whey or casein protein? It depends on the time of day, right? Yeah. If we're eating oatmeal and, and uh, peanut butter at night, then it's definitely casein. It makes it better. <laughs> Perfect sense. Smart. <laughs> Smart. So, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the relationship, okay. man. Yeah. The relationship. So, yeah. so, we should podcast uh, or something? Fact, <laughs> in fact, I mean, you met, you met your wife at the Mastermind. Yep. At the... At the the mansion, the, the mansion in the desert. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was epic, and uh, you guys hit it off there. And uh, you guys run similar businesses in some ways, and very different businesses it's in others. Same time. Yeah, and, and one thing I've noticed is two entrepreneurs under one roof can be can present challenges that mm -hmm. you don't get elsewhere. Can you tell us more about Absolutely. how that's been? Yeah, yeah. So there, there's been a ton of challenges, and then also a ton of benefits. And early on, it was literally the most challenging thing to my ego I've ever experienced in my life, right? I, I grew up in the South thinking like, man brings home the, the bacon, all of that kind of stuff. <coughs> and then I met this, this woman who is just a fucking rock star. And I'm already, I wanna compare myself to others a lot and I, you know, that kind of thing. And so naturally I just started comparing myself to her constantly mm. and it was, it was just, it, it was a huge challenge, right? And at times it was, it would cripple me for days on end where I would get depressed and anxious and all I could focus on is she's better than me. Did you, did you know that that was why you were getting depressed? Or? I knew exactly why. Yeah. I talked to therapists, I talked to my best friends. I could not get out of this state. I t and I was totally upfront with her and I, I just couldn't get out of it. Um, one thing that my therapist, an old therapist of mine told me was, I know, Michael, that you want to, everything in you wants to push away from what she's doing. And like when she's successful, like more successful and excited to like distance yourself, you have to do the opposite. You have to become more involved in what she's doing, more excited. And you know, that was, that was two and a half years ago to this day, it's exactly the same. And not, not that I go through um, the level of challenge, but the more I'm involved in what she's doing, the more excited I am for her. Um, and so 
in the, in the beginning, it was super challenging, but also, you know, as, as y'all know, in, within the first couple months, we moved in together into an RV and some of the absolute It's a best... great way to make or break a exactly. relationship. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very close quarters. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. If it doesn't, then it doesn't work out. If That's it right. does, we're, we're, this is a long-term thing. Yeah. Per- you know? Perfect either way. Yeah. Yeah. So... In, in the RV, like half a dozen to a dozen times, we would just we would smoke a little bit, sit at our little table, fucking ideas, uh, ideas off the wall, right? Um, that was that was some of the you're most not like cigarettes. No, no. I just want to <laughs> right, make sure. I mean, right. you're, you're some... running brute strength and brute body here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you smoke a, a couple cigarettes. <laughs> Get creative. You know, I had a real good time. <clears throat> um, yeah, just so what what I'm trying to say is in that early in the early stages we were just like bouncing ideas off of each other left and right and that's continued to be the case ever since. Like we are each other's biggest support, um, each other's biggest uh, you know, if, if one of us has an idea, it goes through the other before it like actually happens. Mm. And it's been incredible for our relationship but also our business. It's got like a constant mastermind happening in your house. That literally we we used to say that like at night, we would just sit around our table, and, and it was just us chatting, and we were just writing things down that we would implement the next day. You guys ever have the opposite side of that, where someone gives the other an idea or tells the other one what to do, and it's just like, you know what, this is my thing, shut the fuck up? Um, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Er- early on, a lot of that, especially for me, I... I don't care how smart you are, um, how much I look up to you. If I don't ask for your opinion, then it is like brick wall, right? And so for sure in the beginning, for me, it was like that. She's a, you know, she's great. She's, I I tell her something next day, she's implementing it in in the best way possible. Uh, But now we just, uh, we understand how to talk to each other really, really effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we're able to, to, we don't we don't run into that problem anymore what are some steps you took to improve your communication you guys hired a a coach at one time yeah yeah so we we hired a a lady named annie lala um who is eben pagan's wife if y'all if you know i'm sure a lot of the listeners will know eben Um, that was one of the coolest experiences that either of us have had but she she taught us very tactical things for communication as well as like little exercises to do on our own to feel better about ourselves one of the one of the things early on is uh, when one of us wants to, you know, we both have a lot going on and we want to just like start blurting it out immediately. And, but we're, we're together like constantly. We don't have a nine to five. We work very close to each other. So when we would do that, we would kind of take over like, if I'm, if I'm like deep in work and she just starts telling me about something that's going on in her work, it throws me off and I would get bitter or resentful. So one of the, one of the things is just ask, hey, do you have space for this right now? Do you want to hear about this right now? And as simple as that sounds, it went a long, long way for mm-hmm. her. Or not for her, for, for us. Um, and totally lost my train of thought. But that, that was a really helpful one. Mm-hmm. Um, others for communication. Just, I mean... One thing that we're both very intent on is immediately trying to look for where, what, what is my part in this situation? Mm-hmm. Um, rather than trying to divvy up, like what percentage am I responsible for this situation? Take 100% accountability for my own part and then she takes 100% accountability for her own part. Rather than trying to blame, I just go to her like, look, I fucked up. Um, I was totally out of line, blah, 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 blah. That's it. Mm -hmm. And by not putting any blame on her, she softens up and she takes accountability for hers or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. And we found over and over when we tried to, when we would say, you know, I did this, but you did that, the the, the other person is super defensive. So that was another one that was huge for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And something I found out just this morning, you're actually helping build something in her business right now. Yeah. So this is a, this is brand new. Um, I'm helping to build an affiliate model for working against grad. So the system that has been successful for over 15,000 people, uh, 15,000 athletes, coaches, uh, average Joes, et cetera, we're now going to build a package to give to CrossFit gyms to give to their members. Super fired up about this. I think, I think this is one of the 
one of the things that can have the biggest impact in the CrossFit community um, that I know of, period. Uh, it, it, it's going to be phenomenal. Much needed. Yeah, she's been talking about wanting to do this for quite some time. Mm-hmm. And now, now the fact that you're getting involved in helping launch this thing, I think it's going to it's going to completely change the game for affiliate owners because it is the missing link for almost every exactly. gym. Training's great, community's great, but the nutrition piece, they're like, I can kind of tell you and direct you, but yeah. if you get that dialed in, they're going to get way better results happier customers you're the one they're interfacing with as the the gym owner so you're right. kind of getting the the credit and i think you guys are isn't it like kind of like a white label kind of a thing too or like exactly it's going to be so for instance brute is going to be the first affiliate and it's going to be brute strength or, or brute nutrition powered by working against gravity mm-hmm. um so you know usually the crossfit gym just says you know give some information about paleo or zone or whatever it may be now they will be able to give their athletes a system, right? A, a proven system and process for reaching their body composition goals, um, which again, is gonna create a, an enormous amount of value for them. Mm-hmm. They're gonna make more money because the members are gonna stick around longer, but they also have this great new revenue stream. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be amazing for all of the CrossFitters out there as well as the gym owners. Yeah, that's one thing I'm excited about the, the industry as a whole is people coming in with these systems that are already built out. It's like it's tried and true, 15,000 mm-hmm. people have already been through it. It works. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, just all that energy when something that someone may not be an expert in anyway, we can use y'all's system. Exactly. It's. Yeah, a lot of companies are coming out with stuff for, I mean, that's why we do what we do. Right. Yeah, yeah it's and very, it's, it, it will be very low risk for the, for the gym owner um, with a huge financial potential, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And, it's, and it's just kind of like a, a turnkey, like a separate turnkey business, right? Guys, We're going to give them everything. Yeah. Do you guys know what, your, what the percentages are going to be on that yet? Or is that, you still in experimental phase? We're, yeah, experimental phase with that stuff. Cool. And, you, and this is actually taking the, the Working Against Gravity software and, and giving that to the gym owner so they actually have not just like, hey, here's what you say, here's what you do, here's what you sell. Exactly, it is actually literally the, the tool itself for you to interface with the clients, everything. manage the whole thing. That's We're going to train your coach, right? You're going to be, your coach is going to be a licensed, like working against gravity nutrition coach. And then you're going to have our software. You're going to have our marketing, like all of it. That's killer. That's right. So are you guys, what's like the process? So let's say I, I have my gym and I'm considering joining with you guys. Like what's, what's kind of the process I'm going to go through? Have you guys kind of outlined what that yet? What will you go through? Mm-hmm. Um, you will apply and then we're, you know, we're going to ask you a bunch of questions and we want to make sure that this is not like a risky move for you, right? We want to make sure your, your gym is in a good position to take this on and you're not like already working 80 hours a week and throwing this on top of it to try to save the gym, right? Mm-hmm. So once, once you're accepted, then we probably get on a phone call with me for you know for the first like little bit get on phone call with me then we train the coach and that takes a couple months and then from there we're gonna uh, show you a couple things how to throw like a launch party with um basically just launching it to your members Mm -hmm. give you a few emails for marketing uh, some website copy and then launch it to the members and then we just support you monthly to make sure uh, your coach is uh, supported and knows what he or she is doing have you been uh in communication with a lot of box owners at this point not a ton yet yeah like i said this thing is yeah I was wondering Beginning if you noticed phases. anything mm-hmm. that you were talking about making sure that a gym is on on a, a good foundation. Right. Because you're right. A lot of times, um, you know, when a gym owner is like, oh, I need to make more money, they just start piling in, right. you know, more stuff. Yeah, more, and more, so more. I was wondering if you had an opinion yet on what, like, a stable foundation is for a gym. As far as the metrics, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I know we have over 100 people that have already applied, and I... As far as I know, a lot of them are passing, you know, their, 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 their business structure looks good. They've been around for a long time. The f- we have this one uh, immediate goal, which is to get 15 of them, right? 15 started up um, as quickly as possible. And what we're looking for there is probably going to be people that have already gone through WAG, right? That already are, are part of the culture. And then we're looking for why do you want to be an affiliate? Do you want to just make money or... Is it because you want to make a bigger impact in people's lives? And so that's, you know, that stuff is a little bit harder to suss out, but that's what I'm going to be looking for. 
That's killer. So while you're doing this with working against gravity, is Brute kind of on maintenance mode? You got good revenue streams, you got good systems, you got other people to delegate to where you don't have to do all the work and you're putting a lot of focus on the mm -hmm. other side of the house, so to speak? Or is Brute at the same time growing and adding new stuff? The latter, yeah. I'm, I'm still heavily invested in Brute and that takes the, the vast majority of my time. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, by scheduling out my week um, in, a, in a very structured way, I'm able to devote time to both. What does that look like? How do you structure your week? <clears throat> so I just hired a personal assistant, which was an amazing, amazing decision. And sh so she helps me do this. So Mondays and Thursdays are, uh, let's see, 8 a.m. or 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., I have no meetings, n nothing scheduled whatsoever other than like creative work or um, what, whatever that may be, right? Like I'm project. dictating everything. Mm. And then Mondays and Thursdays afternoon, I can have meetings. Tuesdays are just creative. So podcast, that's the only day I do podcast or do like copywriting or anything like that. Wednesday is this more of like a free day. And then Fridays is more like a free day, right? And some, sometimes those end up having a meeting or two um, and I'm responding to some emails and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, also, she, the, the way I handle emails now has changed my life. So every, every day, at least once, maybe twice, I get an update from her with one long email and it has every, all of the emails I've gotten in bold and a summary of each. And I'll either respond to her, right, and tell them her what to tell them, and it'll be very, something very short, or she'll say starred in the folder, and I have to go to that folder and, and respond directly. It saves me 75% of the time checking emails, and then mm -hmm. literally once a day, I probably spend 30 to 60 minutes checking email rather than 10 times a day, 30 minutes at a time, right? Just wasting time. I'm sure everybody listening can relate to that. So that's been huge. Yeah. You're working seven days a week, you take weekends off. How do you do that? Sundays are almost always completely off. And then Saturdays in the morning, I'll usually do work. But um, yeah, we have a lot of free time during the weekends. <clears throat> With that said, if there's something, you know, if I'm in the middle of a launch or she's got a big project going on, then Sometimes we will work like 24, you know, like all day, both of those days. Mm. Uh, but we really try to have some disconnected time on both of those days. So what's going on now with Brute? You know, you guys are, I think, coming up on another launch for Brute Body, right? Yeah, very soon. September is another Brute Body launch. We're getting ready to come up on our, our first stop. Uh, we're giving away a cruise to the transformation winner. winner. So they're going to go to the Bahamas or they have a few different places to choose from. So that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks. Then we have a launch coming out and then we are this close to launching Brute Gymnastics. So of our competitor programs, the gymnastics portion has been hands down the, the, the most commented on, like people just love this shit. Mm. And so now we're going to sell it as a standalone program. Mm. Uh, we've been working on it a long time. So I'm nice. pumped to get it, nice. get it out there. Are, are these continuity programs, like are these ongoing or is it like a six month run, three month run, like how does it work? Yeah, all of them are, are continuity. For sure. Uh, Brute Body is a year long program, but if you're with us for over a year, you enter into what we call, or you have the opportunity to uh, enter Brute Life, which gives you a, you know, discounts on all the programs. You can switch back and forth, a bunch of different incentives, um, and you're part of like this elite club. So people end up just doing Brute Body on repeat, and then we just, you know, we work with them more on their nutrition or whatever it is that they need. Mm. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, it's been really cool watching you look, four years now. Mm -hmm. You went from not really wanting to be a business owner to like having an incredible schedule and being very organized and knowing yourself really well and how you operate in the business. It's, it's been really cool to hear that. It's been an extremely fun experience. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It was something today that I didn't expect to learn that you just talked about that I thought, I thought was really interesting was how you organize your week and then how you do your email. Yeah, and I think I think. At, at some level, we're all going to do something like that to uh, be more efficient. Yeah, I just don't Game check mine right now. There you <laughs> yeah. go. That's, that's, that's the best way. Abstinence. That's, yeah, that's, right, the, right. that's, the, that's the answer. That's the answer. Perfect. Perfect. There's no workaround. You got to yeah, just yeah. abstain. Yeah. yeah, if you want to, if you want to make sure you don't get a response to your email, send it to Mike. That's it. <laughs> hey, it's not coming back. I, I know from experience. No, I, I'm, I'm totally stealing that email thing. That was. I'm like, all right. Yeah, that's yeah. rad. Cool. Uh, where can people find you? 
Um, you can find me at Michael Cajou, C-A-Z-A-Y-O-U-X, or at Brute.Strength, and then find out more about the company at BruteStrengthTraining.com, um, and go check out the podcast. You know, you guys also inspired me to do a podcast, and that's been a huge, like, passion project of mine, so go check it out. Yeah, I went on your show. I had a lot of people reach out afterwards and said, I really enjoyed that one. Hell yeah. Because you got a lot of listeners. Yeah. And, yeah. and what about uh, the, the affiliate program for WAG? Like, where can people kind of find out more info on that? Is there like a list they can get on? And yeah. That's why we're here in the secret compound. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Edit it out. I'll, gi- I'll give them some inside uh, information. Just email info at workingagainstgravity.com and say, hey, I want to get on the list uh, to apply for an affiliate spot. Killer, man. Yeah. yeah. And make sure, if you enjoyed the show, which I know you did, go over to iTunes, five-star review, positive comment. Go over to YouTube, subscribe there as well. New videos coming all the time. Thank <laughs> you.